All right. What is up, traders? What's up, tycoons? Super excited for today's video. We got to talk about Chewy and why I've got a $26 price target on Chewy. Now, Chewy is currently at about 19 bucks, so that's a pretty nice uh, move to the upside potentially we could see in Chewy, um, ultimately looking for about a 38% move uh, in Chewy. Now, I'm going to break down why that is on the chart, uh, but we're also going to do some fundamental analysis using today's sponsor, Simply Wall Street. It's a really amazing platform, uh, and for one of the first times ever, I've seen on the risk analysis here, it says no risks detected for Chewy from their risk checks. So, you know, that is really, really nice to me. I've never really seen that before. Uh, normally, Simply Wall Street does a really good job of breaking down some of the risks, um, whether it's a good stock or a bad stock. You know, there's typically always uh, risks associated with those. So we'll break down what it is that they like about the company so much. Uh, you know, take a look at some really good graphs. You know, we'll look at the valuation aspects of it. <clears throat> we'll take a look at many different components, um, you know, to Chewy in today's video. It's going to be a really good one. So be sure to smash the like button and subscribe for more. Now, as always, the content provided on this channel is for informational and educational purposes only, and it's not intended to be relied upon as legal, financial, or investment advice. So, you know, be sure to read through the disclaimer. And if you're new to the channel, I actually started a completely free newsletter for you guys called Investment Intelligence. You can sign up using the link in the description. And I try to give out free, valuable finance content, free trading content, as well as uh, I try to give out one to two free trade ideas a week. And this is what the trade ideas will look like, highlighting the chart conditions, showing you the actual chart itself so you can see what it is that we're describing, um, and you know, just providing high quality setups, right? If you take a look at the website and you know, go back, because there is a website associated with it, uh, you can see that many of the trade ideas have worked out very well, okay? We have PayPal in here, Teladoc, Rivian, you know, lots of good trade ideas. Uh, RTX was one of the most recent ones. All right. And, you know, you can see members in the discord talking about how their January call options uh, went up over 88 uh, percent. If you do want to be a part of the uh, discord, it's only a dollar right now to get in. If you use promo code Jan24, that will get you into the discord for just a dollar. Now, that's where you get access to all of my different analysis, all of my different trade ideas, uh, as well as many other valuable resources, such as custom scripts, indicators, being able to look at dark pool levels, being able to take a look at gamma levels uh, for stocks. You know, there's lots of really great features inside of the discord. So, you know, join now using that promo code Jan24 and you can get in for a dollar or you can just sign up for the free newsletter. Now, let's go ahead and start off here with the chart. So why do I have this $26 price target? Well, the reason being is because of this blue box here. Now, what this is, is this is a gap, right? If we were to zoom in, okay, and just take a look real quick, in between these candlesticks, we can see that there is what's known as a gap, right? So I'm going to highlight that for you. So you see the bottom wick of this candle, and then you see the top wick of this candle. There's this empty space in between, right? And I love charting these gaps. The reason being is because about 90% of the time, these gaps are going to fill. Now, you know, if that's the case, you know, why don't people just start buying stocks every time that a stock makes a gap and has a gap up to fill? Well, the big question, okay, is when, right? It's not so much a matter of if a gap is going to fill, but more a question of when is a gap going to fill, right? Now, Chewy already had a gap to fill, okay, back over here, right around $24. And we actually did play the initial breakout on Chewy, right? We were to talking about this one in the Discord, um, you know, and that was honestly a really amazing trade. Um, and it worked out very, very well. One of the reasons that I got into that trade was because of this candlestick right here. So let me zoom into that for you, okay? So, you know, we established an area of demand, right? That's our green box. But this candlestick right here was very impressive to me, right? So what this means is that the stock initially gapped down massively, right? This is where the stock opened. And look what happened. As soon as we gapped down, there was nothing but buyers present that whole day. And we had a very strong green body candlestick. Now, to me, these type of candles are a big buy signal, right? The stock rallied over 13% from the lows, right? So a 13% move up after a huge move to the downside. So this tells me that there was some type of overreaction. If we take a look ahead at earnings, so a probably reported earnings gap down off of the earnings and we see just massive interest, huge amount of buyers stepping in here. That was a very big sign to me that, hey, this is a stock that could break out here potentially and got into the stock very shortly afterwards to ride that momentum up towards the $24 gap fill. 
So now if we take a look at the technicals, right, we have this massive move to the upside. And what did we do? Well, we retraced, right? So we did have a strong pullback here, a very significant sell off, right? I mean, if we take a look from the highs, uh, most recent highs to the lows, you know, it dropped almost 30%, right? About 27% from the highs to the lows. But we bounced here exactly at our 78.6% retracement level, right? So very key level right there. And what we've done through that sell off process is we've actually formed a, a falling wedge, right? Indicated by these two trend lines price action is squeezing and compressing here and in a perfect world scenario what you're going to see is a breakout that takes you back up to where the pattern began putting us right around that 24 to 25 dollar price level now if we can get up there right then you have to ask yourself well is this area going to become overhead supply right so are we going to face resistance in this area and sell back off right and potentially create a double top if we were to rally up into this area right you know something like this right we move up we move up we move up and then let's say we sell off okay <clears throat> that's your double top scenario but another scenario that could happen is that, you know, the sellers that were present over here, you know, a lot of those could have been traders that were taking profit off of this massive move to the upside. And if we come back up again, we could break through this level now and actually come up and fill our gap up here around 26 to $27. That's what I think can potentially happen. Now, it doesn't mean that this is going to go up in a straight line. Again, it also doesn't mean that this gap has to fill anytime soon. It could take a very long time for this gap to fill, and we may not see it for weeks, months, or even years. But the setup is there. I'm seeing a lot of things that I like on the technical aspect, right? Initially, the RSI broke out here whenever the stock broke out. And look at what we did. We got a very clean breakout retest of that trend line on the RSI. And take a look at where that happened. That happened at our 78.6 Fibonacci retracement level. So from the technicals alone, Chewy looks like a really great setup with a very good risk to reward ratio, right? Let's say you're you know, putting a stop um, let's just draw it on here real quick. You know, let's say we were to get in right here. We put a stop just below, right? This demand zone here, just in case we pull back down into demand and we were targeting that gap fill to the upside. That is about a two and a half to one risk to reward ratio. Now it's not the best risk to reward ratio. Okay. Um, you know, you prefer to see something like a three to one or a four to one, but two and a half to one is still a relatively good risk to reward ratio. And, you know, if you're able to get in maybe even at a lower price, then that would, you know, for instance, if we were to come in right around here, uh, let's just say $19, you know, again, that's much closer to a three to one risk to reward ratio. And those are kind of, you know, the setups that you want to look for. Now, <clears throat> what about longer term for Chewy, right? W what's the potential longer term for Chewy? And what does some of the fundamentals look like? So we're going to head on over here to Simply Wall Street. Now, this is a really great platform that I've used for a while uh, and definitely glad to have them as a sponsor. You guys can actually get a discount using the link in the description. Um, and I know that you guys will enjoy it and appreciate it. Now, <clears throat> if we just take a look at the quick overview, right? And all you do on this platform is basically search a stock that you want to trade, search a stock that you're interested in investing in or search a stock that you own. And they have their analysts doing a lot of the fundamental you know, analysis for you. So if you're not a pro at fundamental analysis, they do it for you and make it very simple and easy to digest. Now, from their aspect, it's trading basically 1% below their estimate of its fair value, right? The earnings are forecast to grow 49% per year. That is nice, okay? That is nice growth right there. And they also became profitable this year. So no longer are they an unprofitable company. They actually became profitable. Now let's dive a little bit further into it. Now they also give recent news and updates, right? So, you know, you can you can click on these um, and, you know, get access to those. But if we take a look at the volatility, you know, Chewy is a pretty volatile stock. It's above the average market volatility and also above the industry volatility. And when you take a look at performance, you know, Chewy in the past year is still down 50%. So, you know, is this a stock that was oversold a little bit and, you know, potentially has some room to run in 2024? You know, we'll take a look, right? We'll dive in a little bit further. Now, you can take a look and see their breakdown of their revenue, their earnings uh, from their most recent earnings report reported in October 28th of 2023. Uh, earnings season is upon us. So, you know, we will get that next earnings report uh, in, you know, not too long of time, right? 
you can see their earnings per share, uh, basically two cents, right? The gross margin is 28%. And if you hover over these things, it basically gives you a definition, right? So the profit margin the company makes on its revenues after accounting for its cost of revenues. And you can see the net profit margin. So that's going to be the profit margin the company makes on its revenues after accounting for all the expenses, right? Um, and, you know, just dive into some of these things. Now, what we're liking a lot about the company, okay, is take a look at the price to sales ratio versus its peers, all right? And you can see that Chewy is at 0.8 times. Now, the peer average is 1.5 times, right? So it's not significantly overvalued in a price to sales ratio um, perspective. And especially when you relate it to its peers, um, you know, it's not up there, you know, trading at an extreme valuation. Now you can see the historical price to sales ratio, you know, the highest it ever went was about six. Uh, that was back in January of 2021. No surprise there that that was January of 2021, right? Um, you can see the price to sales ratio again over here. Uh, and this is the U.S. specialty retail industry. So it's not so much that it's, you know, related to food or or uh, animals, rather. You know, you take a look at some of the other, you know, things they're comparing it to. It's things like GameStop. It's things like Academy Sports. You know, Chewy being, uh, you know, related to pets is 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 not so much related to those, right? Now, these are some of the analyst price targets, right? And so the purple line is going to be the average uh, one-year price target, okay? And so one year from now, they have a price target of 25.44, which is very close to that $26 price target that I was speaking of. So, you know, the average analyst price target and then my price target based on uh, technical analysis are very, very similar, right? So I do kind of like that perspective. It's basically about uh, saying it's got about 30% potential upside, um, you know, over the next year, right? Um, you look at future growth, right? It gets three out of six checks here. So you can click on these boxes uh, and it'll show you everything. So the earnings versus savings rate, if we were to come and take a look here, the forecast earnings growth of 49% year is above the savings rate. Uh, their earnings are forecast to grow faster than the U.S. market and their earnings are expected to grow significantly over the next three years. Now on the revenue versus market, their revenue is forecast to grow slower than the U.S. market, and um, you know they don't have high growth revenue. So it does tell you about some of the good things about the company and also some of the bad things about the company, right? If you take a look at earnings per share, analyst forecasts um, are, are forecasting about $0.13 cents to about $0.50 cents, um, you know, in the future, into heading into 2026. Uh, so that will be nice. That will be good to see. If we can get some type of growth like this, um, you know, if you look at their ROE, which is your return on equity, uh, it is forecast to be low in about three years time of about 14.7% based on, you know, their analysts. Um, you know, you can take a look at some of the past earnings performance. It gets three out of six checks here. So the first one is going to be quality earnings. They do have quality earnings in their opinion, growing profit margin as well earnings trend. But when it comes to uh, the earnings versus the industry and a high ROE, uh, you know, it doesn't necessarily have those. Now, the financial health is really great for Chewy. Um, so that's a big thing that's, um, you know, has a lot of potential for it. You know, you can see here, it gets five out of six checks on the um, balance sheet health. All right. They have a total share shareholder equity of three hundred ninety three million and a total debt of zero dollars, which brings its debt to equity ratio to zero. Its total assets and total liabilities are two point nine billion and two point five billion, respectively. Now, their EBIT is eleven point seven million, making it uh, making its interest coverage ratio negative zero point four. It has cash and short term investments of nine hundred and fifty seven point two million. All right. Now, it doesn't pay a dividend. If it did, you know, simply Wall Street would give you the dividend breakdown. You can take a look at management, um, which is another really cool feature. Um, you know, it'll tell you who the CEO is, right? Um, you can see the CEO's compensation, right? So what's really cool about this is that um, it shows you the compensation relative in in his salary and his salary relative to the company's earnings. So that's what's really cool. And you can kind of, you know, see sometimes like, oh, well, why is the CEO getting compensated so much and like earnings aren't going up, right? And earnings are getting worse. Um, you know, that's not necessarily something that you want to see. Maybe you want to say, hey, well, you know, maybe you guys should stop paying the CEO so much and try to figure out how you can use that money to actually, you know, grow earnings or or get some type of earnings in your company. So 
his compensation is below average for companies of similar size, and his compensation has been consistent with company performance over the past year. Right, you can see basically what he gets. Um, you know, two point four eight million. All right, and you can dive a little bit more. You can see, um, you know, the co-founder Ryan Cohen is the co-founder uh, co-founder of this. Uh, you have the chief technology officer. You know, you can click on this more and see a little bit more things. You know, if that's things that you're interested in, the board members. All right. Um, and then ownership, what's really nice about this with the ownership part um, is you can see the recent insider transactions. So we can see in December, we actually had individuals in the company buying shares, right? We see James Starr here. He bought $300,000 in December and also another quarter million on top of that. So, um, you know, nearly $600,000 worth of shares that he purchased. And you can see the max price here paid for those was between $19.60 and $20.38. So we are just roughly right around that price that he bought, you know, over $550,000 in. So that's really cool. Um, I know a lot of people tend to panic whenever they see insider selling. Remember, these people are real people, right? They're people just like me and you. They're not working on Wall Street at these companies. And yes, they do have salaries and things like that. But you know, let's say one of them wants to buy a house, right? Well, a lot of their money is tied up in stocks. So the way these people pay themselves is they sell their shares, right? And so it's not a huge red flag every time you see people selling shares or you see insider transactions that are sales. Remember, this is how people pay themselves, right? It's not always about, oh, well, this means that they think that the stock is going to go down. And, you know, well, what if they just wanted to buy something, right? What if they wanted to buy a new car or buy a new house? Or what if their kids are now adults and they're heading into college and they need to pay for some college, right? And they need to pay some college tuition. What's more important to me is insider buying. And I really like to see that. And we saw that recently here in December. Okay. Um, you know, you can see the insider buying gets a check here. Insiders have bought more shares than they've sold in the past three months. When you take a look at the ownership breakdown, Okay, you can see the general public gets access to about 5% of the, uh, you know, of, of the company. Individual insiders only have about half a percent. Institutions own about 25%, so about a quarter of a percent. And then private companies have 69% there. You can actually come in here and see the top shareholders. Um, the top 25 shareholders own 87% of the company, which is, that's, that's a lot, really. But you see here, Argos Holdings owns 69% of the company. Then you have Bailey and Gifford Co. You have Vanguard, of course. Vanguard pretty much owns everything. Morgan Stanley owns about 1% of the shares. Um, and, you know, so this is just cool stuff that you guys can dive into uh, and check into more. You know, people like Vanguard and and um, BlackRock, they're pretty much going to show up on every single, uh, um, you know, uh, top shareholders things because they pretty much own everything in the world. So that was today's breakdown of Chewy. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. Uh, if you did, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel for more. Let me know, do you guys like the fundamentals a little bit more? Do you like the chart more? Uh, do both of them seem bullish to you? Are there any red flags or risks uh, maybe that we're not covering that you guys think um, are important and you think people should know about? I'd love to hear from you guys and let me know in the comment section down below.